Thank you so much. It's really great to be back here after a few years. I remember it uh, vividly. It was in my eighth grade and I stood up in front of my class asking for contributions to the rainforest. It was the first time I um, did something that was bigger than myself and I think I, I felt nervous but also proud in that moment. And this uh, initial activism, I think, uh, had a more profound effect in my life than I realized then in the 80s. In the early 2000s, I began to be active in the peace movement. I held uh, non-violent uh, workshops. I did uh, activism on Swedish weapons export. Uh, and within the peace movement, I met uh, people uh, who were vegans, uh, which I wasn't at, the, that, at that time. And they exposed the enormous suffering of animals to me. And this uh, led me to uh, uh, fully uh, be, uh, be fully active for animals. Uh, so uh, for eight years, uh, I have um, done uh, animals, uh, animal rights activism. Uh, and I've done it uh, because uh, I could, uh, uh, because of the contributions that so many individu individuals chose to give to my project. And the year, the project I call A Year for the Animals, Ett år för djuren. Increasingly, I became aware of um, the substantial threat that the climate crisis uh, was posing to all conscious life on the planet. In the summer of 2021, um, I was heading down to the city of Malmö um, in the south of Sweden. My twin brother, I don't know if you can see who is my twin brother here. <laughs> Fur is right here for me, yes, and myself behind, beside him. He asked me to come to a blockade which was organized by Extinction Rebellion, a climate movement. Uh, and I uh, thought it was a good uh, time, a good way to spend time with him, so I joined. Uh, after a while, the police came and carried us away, and, um, and I got uh, convicted for this action, uh, a little bit of fines. And this action and, and some others uh, deepened my involvement in the climate um, justice movement. Um, and I thought, okay, how should I direct my activism now? I didn't want to give up on animal rights, uh, but I wanted to um, make more of this activism uh, for the climate. So consequently, uh, I decided to uh, actually do both, and I asked my donors if they could imagine funding uh, both climate work and animal rights work. Uh, and they did, so I was happy to be able to uh, 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 f uh, crowdfund to uh, doing half of my time to animal rights and half of the time to, for the climate. And I call that a year for the animals and the earth, ett år för djuren och jorden. So that's what I'm doing this year. And in this presentation, I will discuss some of the differences and similarities between the animal rights and climate uh, issue and movements as I see them. And I hope to begin uh, exploring how these uh, movements can mutually support one another. I would guess that uh, most or all of you uh, here are on a plant-based diet. And uh, I would ask you to uh, raise your hand now if you switch to an animal-free diet because of animals. Can I see who has done that? Oh, that's pretty many, thank you. Can I see how many switch to a plant-based diet because of the climate? Uh, some, thank you. And maybe some switch to a plant-based diet because of health or any other reason? Uh, some, or one. <laughs> thank you. Um, we all have different reasons and uh, I, I usually enjoy asking vegans why they adopted a plant-based uh, diet. And uh, many say for ethical reasons. And if I feel a bit mischievous, I usually ask for what ethical reasons? Uh, though I'm fairly certain that they mean animal-related ethical reasons. Like most of you, um, I um, stopped consuming, consuming animal products to avoid the contribution to the enormous suffering of, of animals. Uh, yet, there are many today, maybe more and more, that sh choose a plant-based diet because of the climate crisis. 
they recognize that um, that one of the most impactful thing you can do as a, as everyday actions uh, for the climate is to stop consuming animal products. And I would argue that this, this is an ethical reason as good as any. Uh, both uh, animal rights and the climate issue uh, revolves around caring for others, but with different focuses. The suffering of billions of um, beings in factory farms is occurring here and now. Here is a pig I met um, last uh, month uh, in Kristianstad, where we have the biggest uh, pig slaughterhouse in Sweden. Uh, and this was at the vigil with Kristianstad Pig Save. The biggest challenge, as I see it in the animal rights movement, is that uh, we want people to care about individuals uh, that doesn't belong to uh, our species. And the biggest challenge um, in the climate issue is that most of us in this part of the world have not yet experienced uh, the problems of the climate crisis. And therefore, most of us don't understand its, uh, its uh, dangers. Other continents, uh, though, have experienced this already massively. But this uh, summer in Sweden and in Norway, we have uh, begun to see the effects uh, more and more by the climate. As you can see here, this is from a picture from Norway, uh, a landslide because of heavy rains. And actually, uh, only last week, we had record floodings in Västerås, the city where, where I live. And I saw it uh, as I was out running. And um, um, because, uh, this, this, uh, because the true cli climate crisis lies in the future, unless we rapidly and significantly reduce greenhouse gases, there is substantial risk that our civilization won't survive. As you know, generally when we talk about the climate crisis, we talk about how it affects humans. However, it also profoundly affects um, non-human animals. One example uh, of this uh, is the climate of the climate crisis impact on animals is uh, the bushfires in Australia in, in 2019 and 2020, uh, where it caused harm or death to three billion non-human animals. Uh, a number so big, so we can't even begin to imagine it. One similarity, as I see it, between animal rights and the climate issue is that we already have the solutions to solve these. Uh, we could, if we had the political will, um, uh, uh, stop the exploitation and slaughter of animals uh, very quickly uh, and switch to a plant-based diet. Similarly, we could significantly reduce um, greenhouse gas emission and uh, switch to a fossil-free um, system. The problem is a deficiency of political will and the courage uh, to do these radical changes that are needed. A primary um, overlap between animal rights and, um, and the climate lies in the necessity to switch to a, from an animal-based food system to a plant-based one. Uh, this shift is highlighted by um, the renowned author Jonathan Safran Foer in his book, We Are the Weather, Saving the Planet Begins at Breakfast, uh, that came out in 2019. He writes, Choosing to eat fewer animal products is probably the most important action an individual can take to reverse global warming. In the book, um, Regenesis, uh, Feeding the World Without Devouring the Planet, released in 2022, George Monbiot writes, Switching to a, from a diet that's high in meat to one entirely based on plants would cut greenhouse gases from food by 60%. Just over one third of the world's greenhouse gas emissions are produced by the food system. Now, I know that um, um, many animal rights activists get frustrated with these arguments sometimes because they fail to address animal rights. They rightly point out that cutting down on meat and animal products is not enough. To truly advocate for animals, we must transform our perspective of them, 
viewing them not as commodities, but as individuals with rights. Um, though I fully agree with this, um, I also think that regardless of why anyone changes to a plant-based diet, it's always a, a good thing uh, to get there, to this change, because it saved so many lives, now and also in the future. And we shouldn't forget either that a change in diet can also affect, um, impact thoughts. After a climate action I was on earlier this year, I took a walk with uh, one of the organizers of, the, of this event and uh, he um, told me that he has changed to a plant-based diet because of climate reasons. And by, by doing this change, uh, he had opened up much more for the animal rights uh, ideas that uh, never occurred for, for him before. And I think um, um, this is the, the reason for this is that uh, when we eat meat, we try to come up with reasons why we should continue eating meat. We have these defenses. But when we switch the diet, this goes away and we can also change our views and values. During a New Year's Eve party, uh, I had a conversation about climate with uh, fellow vegans who, who, like me, became vegan because of animal ethics. They told me that they believe that the climate um, benefits of their vegan lifestyle were so great so they could fly easily once or twice a year. Uh, and this, I think, could be an example of negative spillover. It's a concept in psychology where one good action excuses a bad one. But uh, let's have a look at the numbers just to be sure. Um, I took the numbers of a normal Swede. Um, uh, he or she emits uh, 8 tons per person per year in um, greenhouse gases. And from this, uh, also in average, uh, 1.4 tons comes from food. So you can quite easily see that even if you stayed uh, totally animal free, uh, it wouldn't um, uh, reduce very much on the total of this. Compare your footprint uh, with a round trip from Europe to um, Thailand, which emits uh, roughly 2.5 tons of greenhouse gases by only that trip. And that's more than a full year of eating meat on a daily basis and quite a lot of meat. How much do we have to go down then? Well, in the Paris Agreement, signed in 2015 uh, at a historic UN meeting, uh, they um, reached the target that each person should emit no more than one ton per person per year to be, to be in the safe, uh, that's the safe limit. So unfortunately, um, merely adopting a plant-based diet falls uh, short of this goal. Even though uh, consumer, uh, in individual consumer choices won't save the climate, I think um, uh, that it makes an important difference, especially when combined with uh, political activism. Such, uh, such choices demonstrate our willingness uh, to transform now for the sake of, um, uh, pr uh, of preserving a livable future. I don't think Greta Thunberg here would have been such an inspiration to so many if she had continued flying and eating meat. She is a person people look up to, I think, because she walks the talk. It's only on IAA-generated pictures that you can find Greta eating meat. <laughs> One uh, advantage of advocating for a plant-based food system from a climate perspective is that climate concerns are generally more accepted by the public and by politicians. While the climate uh, change deniers still exist, most individuals um, acknowledge that human activity is warming the planet and that is causing a significant risk for us. Uh, here you see the Swedish Prime Minister uh, right-wing Prime Minister, and uh, he, like most, uh, acknowledged that is, we have the climate crisis and we should do something about it. Unfortunately, though, uh, he and the rest of his government do uh, way too little 
uh, about this. They actually have taken now decisions that uh, increase our emissions rather than significantly lower them, which, is in, um, which uh, breaks with the promise they made in the Paris Agreement. But when it comes to animal rights, most politicians won't even say it's a problem how we treat animals in our countries. Though many claim that they are interested in, uh, in animals, very few will say it's an ethical problem that we continue to eat uh, animal products. Because the climate crisis is acknowledged uh, and the an animal rights issue is not, it will probably be more effective uh, to argue politically for a change to a plant-based diet with arguments connected to climate rather than animal rights, uh, at least uh, for the time being. Uh, those um, pessimistically inclined uh, might argue to let emissions uh, continue so that uh, civilization collapses in the belief that it will benefit animals. Why? Uh, because a collapse of society would also mean the collapse of industries, uh, including factory farms. And um, people would probably continue eating animal products, but probably uh, much less than today. Uh, a counter-argument um, to, to wishing for a collapsed society is not only that it, would, um, be, uh, that it would lead to a lot of suffering and death for humans and non-human animals. Um, it will also mean uh, the end, uh, probably, of um, research and technology. If we manage to act enough on the, on the climate, uh, we could preserve civilization. Then research in the food sector uh, would be able to continue and could possibly uh, eradicate animal exploitation. We have historical instances how, which illustrate how uh, technological progress have ended some animal exploitation. Let's have a look. In the year 1900, dominate, uh, horses dominated totally on the streets of New York City, as can be seen here. What happened then? In 1913, horses had been substituted almost totally by cars. The exploitation of horses as means of transportation didn't disappear because people began caring about horses. It happens because technology provided something more efficient. It's possible that the same can happen uh, with uh, our food system. Perhaps tomorrow's animal-free food technologies will totally outcompete today's animal products. George Monbiot um, explored this theme in his book Regenesis that I mentioned earlier. And in an interview I conducted with him last year, he expressed his belief that um, precision fermentation technology uh, can replace animal farming. Uh, this technology produces animal-free foods from microbial brewing in um, large metallic containers uh, as these. When it comes to replacing food uh, uh, from factory farms, we already have good plant-based alternatives, as you know. Though new technology would probably speed up the transition greatly. However, one area where we still lack understanding is wild animal suffering. More research and new technology uh, are required to address this very complicated uh, issue. But it won't happen in a collapsed society. In such a situation, we would never be able to do anything about the suffering in the wild. So this, uh, I believe, strengthens the need for animal rights activists to uh, contribute uh, or support in, in some way to the climate justice movement. The emergence of uh, artificial intelligence, AI, could affect animals, climate and most other issues in our society. Should AI become super intelligent, surpassing uh, human abilities, as some experts believe, it could be a game changer in almost all areas of our lives. In a good scenario, it might bring breakthrough solutions to both the climate crisis and animal rights. Perhaps AI would be more ethically inclined than we humans and maybe stop us from killing animals. Or in a worst case scenario, um, 
AI, AI could mean the end of uh, both uh, human and non-human animals. But technology is inherently difficult to predict. Um, but I think that um, AI will um, at least do uh, some effect, or maybe a very big one. Um, perhaps in as little as a few years and, or a few decades. So now I have discussed some of the connections between animal rights and uh, climate issues and movements. But what should we do about it? I'm not advocating a, a, a merger between the animal rights movement and the climate movement. I think it's uh, best if we uh, continue because we, uh, in our separate movements because we have different focuses. Uh, nonetheless, I think joint campaigns uh, centered around transitioning to a plant-based uh, food system uh, could be a good idea. One notable um, uh, initiative is the plant-based treaty launched by Animal Save Movement, of which I belong myself. Uh, this idea is to push for a um, shift to plant-based diets uh, in all levels of society. Uh, since my colleague in the Animal Save Movement, uh, Lea Godet, will have a presentation on this at this conference uh, Sunday morning, I won't say more than uh, to recommend highly to go to her, her talk. One collaboration, um, uh, one example, uh, was when Animal Rebellion Stockholm and Extinction Rebellion Sweden last year joined forces to go to the multinational dairy producer, Ala. We went in there uninvited and read an open letter uh, in a lobby, uh, asking them or telling them to switch to animal-free products. And as you can see, poured uh, fake blood on a dairy packet and the earth. Um, their head of communications came out and listened and, and, and talked to us. Uh, another example is um, also from Extinction Rebellion Sweden. Uh, we have an ongoing campaign called Rebellion of the Authorities. We go in in a similar fashion to um, a, an authority um, of some kind. And last year we went to uh, the Swedish Food Agency and had like a press conference, uh, uninvited again, um, where we talked about the importance of switching to a plant-based uh, diet. Uh, and on the banner here it, said, uh, it says, plant-based food for health and climate. Of course, as an individual, you can choose to join um, uh, both the animal rights uh, and the climate justice movement. However, I advise joining a movement only if you generally care about the cause. If animal, uh, if animal rights are activists engage in the climate movement primarily uh, to recruit vegans or just to talk animal rights without caring so much about uh, the climate, I think it would uh, come off as very insincere and it could undermine our credibility. Uh, similarly, if climate activists would join animal rights movement only to discourage flying or, uh, or decrease car usage without a genuine concern for animals, their motives would uh, rightly be questioned. It's still a fact that the climate issue is heavily focused on, on how it affects humans and with the goal of cutting down fossil fuels. If you would become part of the climate movement, you can change this by suggesting to include also uh, how it affects uh, non-human animals. And actions also focused on how the animal industry contributes to climate crisis and what we should do about that. Uh, in May, I uh, participated in two Extinction Rebellion Sweden blockades at the port of Göteborg, which is a, uh, which is a hub for Swedish uh, oil export. The first blockade had a health team, as, as can be seen here. And I was very pleased that um, the next um, uh, blockade had a theme of uh, nature and animals. Uh, as you can see here, uh, representing the animals with masks. My, I myself was uh, carried away by the police uh, carrying a donkey mask. I had my trial for this action last week and uh, I will get my sentence uh, next week. So wish me luck, please. Um, 
And where do we, uh, we as individuals uh, end up focusing on animal rights, uh, on the climate or a bit of both maybe? Uh, I hope that we will all see the benefits and the possibilities of strengthening each other's uh, struggles. Ultimately, we um, have the power to save lives. We can save chickens from exploitation in factory farms, uh, animals from the wild, from human-caused extreme fires as a result from climate crisis. I urge us all to uh, transform our food system to something that doesn't scream before we put it on our plates, to something that is both delicious and kind to each individual and to the climate. And let us promise ourselves to strive for a planet where the living conditions are best possible for all human and non-human animals alike. Let us strive to respect and show, to show compassion toward all living beings, regardless if they have arms or wings, whether they are born today or in the future. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> Thank yes, you, Martin, great. for this very interesting presentation. Are there any questions? Hi. Um, my question is that um, uh, I observe that there is uh, a generalized lack of political will to associate the food to... It depends on maybe on different countries and different, uh, different level. But there is the lack clear lack of, uh, of intention, political intention to, to connect the food to the climate emergency. And uh, this lack of will is obviously supported by the pressure from, uh, from lobbies. Um, it has been promoted through uh, communication channels, through advertisements. Um, in France, there was an advertisement that was saying, if you want to, uh, uh, to become an activist, eat good meat. And how do, uh, how do we deal with that? Yeah, you're, you're obviously right. And uh, I think that goes for most countries, if not all. I, I see that in Sweden too. Um, and uh, not only do they have uh, powerful lobbies, as you say, but also I think uh, most people are so connected to, to food more than maybe fuel or something like that for our cars or, or anything. Um, so I think that uh, that's a hard one to, to solve. But I think, as I said, uh, in, the, in the climate movement, uh, we have been bad at, at raising that uh, issue also. So, I mean, that could be part of it. We, we have to, if we want to change this, we have to address it in the movements that care, care about it. Other, otherwise, we don't have any chance. So. I guess that's the only th thing I see. M maybe also another thing is that perhaps one can say that w w with flying, for instance, we don't have the technology to do that fossil-free today. Um, uh, but with food, we have the solution already. Maybe one can um, at least um, uh, put that as an argument to willing poli poli uh, politics uh, as a simple solution that we don't have to wait for. Mm. And just to, just to add to the question, do you feel like in um, climate, um, climate action movements, do you see the change of, uh, of mentality where people do start realizing the connection? Because it's not necessarily my experience. Yeah, as I showed, at least two examples uh, uh, that for me were positive and that I, I, I didn't uh, expect was that this focus on nature and, and uh, animals that I saw in one of the blockades and also that it, it is uh, very uh, focused on change, change, changing to a plant-based diet when we talk about uh, the food system. Uh, and I haven't uh, heard uh, now lately any criticism that we oh, I have to have my meat uh, and so on from climate activists. So I think they do realize more and more that this is the way to go, at least uh, in my perspective in Sweden, but it might be different, of course, what country you talk about. Mm. Yes. Um, hello. Uh, thank you for your presentation. And uh, if I understood correctly, I think you like promoted um, the saving of civilization and the technology and 
Um, so, did you heard? Have you heard about the um, arguments that said that uh, technology and its development um, primarily are used against uh, progressive um, outcomes? Often, it comes to more surveillance from the police and from governments, and also. Have you heard about the arguments that say that civilization as we know it with capitalism and even men, maybe more uh, before capitalism but uh, are not sustainable? So maybe we should like not rely on uh, technology development and also civilization and maybe changing our perspective on the long term if you want to have a livable planet. Have, have you heard about this and what are your thoughts about this? Yeah, thanks for raising that. Uh, all valid points and I am worried about the future and uh, even though civilization continues uh, uh, and you're right, the capitalist, capitalistic system we have is not sustainable and it's contributing so much to, to the exploitation of both uh, especially animals but also many humans of course. Um, so, yeah, I see uh, uh, big dangers. R right now, I'm, I have um, read and listened to many books on AI, and I'm worried uh, because I see so many dangers, but also possibilities. So, um, uh, I think uh, we c it's difficult to deny or try to st stop totally uh, advancement in technology and so on. We could change the. We could try to change the econo economic system. I think that would be a good idea to try at least. But we should uh, primarily focus on how, how can we make technology safe. How can we make it available to, to more in a fair and sustainable way? If more people are engaged in that question, I think we would have a much better chance at least. But I think a collapsed society would be a, a shame because we have the possibility. Uh, p um, potentials, um, a great potential, I think, to develop our world to a great world much better than it is today. I'd like to believe that. Okay, so I think we have time for one more question, if there is a question. I, I think I saw her first. <laughs> Sorry, I just have a comment. Uh, I'm Anu from Lomus, Estonia, and um, in our organization, the link between agri animal agriculture and climate change is something we talk about a lot. And sometimes politicians say directly that they like understand and they agree, but it's just not like politically like smart move to actually work on it. So sometimes it feels like there's nothing we can do just to wait until they are ready. Because pressuring them doesn't work. Uh, people understand, politicians understand, but nobody's doing anything. So maybe you have any comments on that? Thank you. Yeah, um, I, I agree. We, that's what we have today also for most politi politicians. But what, what can we do more than to show that it is an option, that more and more are, are choosing to cut down on meat or take away meat, going vegetarian or uh, hopefully even uh, vegan more and more? Then we, we show everyone, we show society that uh, we are ready for politicians that do take these um, uh, changes uh, seriously. Uh, and of course, uh, as industries can lobby, we can lobby, we don't uh, maybe say lobbying, but uh, we can influence them in some way, and we should. We should be uh, trying to, to um, push them or uh, to argue with them that this is a switch we, we have to do and that we are behind those courageous politicians that, that takes the first steps to do this. Uh, let's try to find those that are positive in the beginning because then maybe we can try to build a base and, and to show that we're many behind such changes. Uh, that, uh, but um, yeah, that's the only thing I can have. I'm sure we can uh, uh, reach many conclusions together and I um, look forward to having this conference of talking about this issue and many others that are raised here. So thank you so much for being here and being part of the discussion. Thank you, Martin.